there there is a new law that's that is putting some uh you know restrictions on technology in no, California. No, it's my job. Can what, uh, what what's is the it? first the first thing of the second? New ant bond law. No, New California bond. Oh <laughs> in California. Go ahead, read the notes. Read the notes. Robot laws? Anti-robot laws? Kind of. Ooh. Regulation of social media platforms to be responsible for their actions. Yep. No repeat of Cambridge Analytica. Yep. Don't read that second part. I know that second part. It's a good joke. I don't want to give away the joke early. We're going through a toll booth. And you're probably not going to deliver it properly either. I'm not a comedian. <laughs> exactly. You're legally obligated not to make jokes. Uh... But California did uh, just put out, I just read that California put out a uh, anti-bot law for social media to make them more responsible um, about their censorship and about selling information and data uh, to possibly control elections or uh, manipulate uh, psychographics in any way, which was something that we saw with Cambridge Analytica, right? Like as much as everybody freaks out about Russia, 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 the reality is that one of the major reasons how our elections were hacked uh, was through a British corporation paid for by an American billionaire, right? Robert Mercer was the one that hired Cambridge Analytica to uh, use psychographics to uh, push people to vote against Hillary Clinton. Uh, I wouldn't say vote for Donald Trump. I think a lot of people voted against Hillary Clinton. And that was another thing, right? Another thing was like people were voting against a particular candidate uh, instead of for somebody or for something in general. Yeah, there was a lot of that, huh? Yeah, I think so. I think that's been a major... I bitched about it a bunch. I've constantly brought that up. Um, but that's the, that's that's how Democrats kind of felt better about being like a really shitty party <laughs> is by pushing Russiagate. You know, like by blaming Russiagate. And even now it's like Robert Mueller came out and found nothing. Um, and they're still kind of like trying to do it, which, yeah, especially Rachel Maddow. Rachel Maddow has kind of been on the forefront of pushing Russiagate. Uh, as uh, my friend Lee Camp says, the Maddow disease. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, she, she espouses a lot of Russiagate. Uh, and that is primarily because... Uh, to Rachel Maddow. Uh, I, I don't know why I waved to the toll gate person, uh, but I did. Because uh, you're agreeable. <laughs> I guess so. You're exceptionally agreeable. I just want them to know that I uh, acknowledge them as people. But That's, anyway, Rachel, Rachel, Maddow, Rachel Maddow pushed the, the, the Russiagate conspiracy theory for two fucking years. For two years she pushed the Russiagate, the Russiagate theory because to, to Rachel Maddow, uh, America was great whenever we were, uh, you know, fighting the Ruskies, going, making sure that we can't trust our neighbors. Uh, go over and ask your neighbor for a cup of sugar and make sure that they're not flying any communist flags. Are you a red? Uh, what color is that sugar? Is it white or is it red? Which color is it? Is there red sugar? I don't know. It works for the joke, though. Yeah. For the McCarthyism? The McCarthyism pushed on by Rachel Maddow. I think it works. But, yeah, I, and, I mean, we forget, right? Like, we forget, like, Cambridge Analytica uh, even happened. And the, the, these sort of things is, like, Facebook sold ads. Facebook sold those ads. They legally let them uh, sell those ads. And they've been doing it forever, right? Cambridge Analytica came out and said uh, that they that's their... That's their forte. Like, they're good at uh, election manipulation, using psychographics, collecting all this data, and, and Facebook allowed them to do all these things. And then when, when uh, Mark Zuckerberg was on trial, like, they, they didn't really ask him any, like, questions about it. Most of the senators were just like, so, so, so Facebook is a, is a website? Am I saying that properly? A website on the internet? Uh, is that is that correct? Am I safe to say? On the what now? That is that it is on the internet, which which I'm reading here is a series of tubes. <laughs> it's a series of tubes that starts in Delaware 
It starts in Delaware. I believe Joe Biden. You're going into a Bernie. Uh, I'm <laughs> going into a little bit of a Bernie here. Uh, but it is a website. Is that? Am I pronouncing that properly? Can someone check my pronunciation of the word website? Is that proper? I don't think Bernie was invited to uh, to talk to Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> Although I would have loved to see, I would have loved to see Bernie Sanders uh, grill Mark Zuckerberg about Facebook. Just you know, I have I have a Facebook profile. I have, a, I have a profile, and uh, and there is censorship on your site. There is censorship on your site, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, I remember, I remember, I was uh, I was talking to Nikola Tesla, and looked at Nikola, <laughs> and I said, uh, Nikola, you got to change it to oh Nicholas. It's getting God. quite confusing, but uh, that's not why I'm here. Uh, but we got to figure out a way to connect each other on a global. Platform. I said that. I said that to Tesla, and he looked at me and he said, "I am a god of lightning." And I said, "Nobody knows what the fuck you're talking about, Nick. Awesome. You gotta figure it out." <laughs> that would have been great. He would have been like, "I am a god of <laughs> lightning." <laughs> yeah, Nikola Tesla believed that he could. Uh, he could kind of control lightning. <laughs> That's awesome. Did he really, or is that Nikola, just part of the joke? No, I'm Nikola gullible, Tesla. So. I, Nikola Tesla, I think, legitimately believed that he could like control and manipulate lightning. He came up with some wacky ideas, way ahead of his time. But some of his ideas wacky. <laughs> no one's gonna understand. No that one's reference. gonna get the Johnny the homicidal <laughs> maniac reference. Oh, it's so sad. But uh, yeah, no one grilled him. And now it's like, now we see all of these concerted efforts by, by these social media uh, companies, um, including, to, like, so it goes from, like, Twitter to Facebook, Instagram, which is controlled by Facebook, and they all let these algorithms decide what is and isn't, like, a, should be available on their platform, right? Which is bullshit. It's like, is that who we really want to be, uh, want to give authority to controlling free speech, to controlling who gets to see what, right? Bots. Like well, that's what it is. They're algorithms. <clears throat> so this new California law is essentially going to hold the companies accountable for what the what their algorithms decide is and isn't acceptable on their platform. Um, which Joe Rogan uh, interviewed uh, Jack Dorsey, Vijay Gotti, and Tim Pool, which we listened to. That was a very interesting conversation uh, where it was like uh, Vijay Gotti is the, the safety and trust lawyer person from uh from twitter and <clears throat> you know she was just like every time tim pool brought up a case that like wasn't you know approved by the but by, by the 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 grand poop of of twitter uh they were just like i didn't I, I am not I'm not familiar with this case. This case could be real. It couldn't be real. I mean, it was just like the way that you would do it if you were an attorney, which yeah, she is. Yeah, she she so. used big big city lawyer talk, uh, and she got away with it, which is like I don't know. It doesn't really it doesn't really put them off the hook. Because there was there was also a couple things uh, a couple months ago maybe maybe six or seven months ago um, I remember like a bunch of independent news sources uh, just disappeared off of Facebook and Twitter uh, like they just boop gone uh, and any any uh, Twitter handle associated with them was also taken off of their platform. No warnings were issued. No, uh, no flags to their accounts. You know, and it was like they just decided that oh, you're not uh, you're not a legitimate news source, which is which is so funny because they kept CNN, Fox News, and MSNBC, which is like they're not legitimate news sources. But, you know, like come on, you gonna tell me? <laughs> come on. It's unfortunate what's happened to the media, yes. Yeah, they're not... Those, those corporate news networks aren't looking at journalism in an objective light. Uh, and not to say that some of the 
some of the companies that were taken off don't have a bias. They do, but uh, they were still covering news that you know affected more people and communities, uh, but like low-income communities and uh, like the minority, the other status and stuff like that. And they were and they were all just like, nope, you're not a real thing. You're not a you're not a you're not real enough for for Twitter and Facebook to keep on there. And when Twitter and Facebook were asked about it, they were just like, yeah, it's just what our bots are doing. And that's, that sort of stuff happens on, on YouTube all the time, too. We just saw the whole uh, thing with Steven Crowder and uh, Carlos Mazza from Walk, Vox. Uh, Vox wanted uh, to demonetize them, and that's all algorithm stuff, too. It's like the algorithm can't make a distinction of who is espousing... Uh, you know, XYZ belief system and who is being critical of somebody espousing XYZ belief system. Uh, so it just like demonetizes everybody. So you just can't talk about it, period. Just like that's not how you, if you, if you don't like a particular ideology, that's not how you go, you know, that's not how you fight back against it. I also uh, heard some videos or commentators talking about how the people who decree, decry a certain thing are more likely to use the plain language, whereas the people who are trying to propagate certain ideologies are the ones who are more likely to use the dog whistles, which I yeah. like to use lightly and not too heavy-handedly because I feel like you can kind of turn anything into a dog whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and share it. Uh, these are little clips from a little segment I do called Road Reflections where uh, I go live on my Facebook page uh, and talk about current events, creativity, uh, touring, what's going on uh, in my life. So if you enjoy this kind of content, you can go and like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Krish Mohan. Ha ha. Uh, I'm also performing live stand-up comedy all around the country. If you enjoyed these uh, little snippets of sociopolitical commentary, uh, it's very similar to what my stand-up comedy is. You can go to ramennoodlescomedy.com for all of the show dates and tickets. It's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, and if you want to continue supporting DIY independent socially conscious comedy content, you can become a patron today. I don't have uh, any corporate sponsors or any small business sponsors just yet. So at the moment, I am people-sponsored. I'm sponsored by you guys. So you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha and become a patron today starting at only $2 a month. You can check out all the tiers and rewards. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you soon.